Hi, this is T with T Quilts, and I'm here today to do a different type of video. We all have works in progress and trying to keep track of how many works in progress we have or at what state they're in, whether you're still piecing blocks or is the quilt top ready for quilting? Do you just need to add binding? Um, we have various state of completion progress and also keeping track of how many projects you actually complete in a year and so I'm here today to show you how I keep track of my projects and I do have a very extensive list of projects and part of that is because I teach classes as well as I do like trying new techniques so that I can use them in my lectures and such so without further ado I'm going to put the camera on my computer screen and show you what I do the program that I actually use to do my documentation is Microsoft Excel and it's part of the Microsoft Office package and I just want to point out that I am going to be using a laser pointer here and there just to help you out with that but I also try to zoom in so this is going to be a very shaky video. So. Let's start up at the top just to show you that it comes up with a bogus file name and then it lets you know that you're in Microsoft Office Excel. So what I have here is just a blank sheet to show you how Microsoft Excel opens up and then down here you will notice that you have whoops you will notice that you have columns that are listed A, B, and so forth. And it goes all the way through Z. And then once you have done the entire alphabet, it will start with A, 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 B, A, C, A, D columns. So you can have unlimited number of columns in Excel. And then also going up and down this side you will see that you have rows and so you have rows but what's most important is when you click in any of these gridded column areas you have a reference name for that row so I'm just telling you some basic things so that when I switch over to my document you'll understand what's going on and so one more thing I want to show you before we go to the document is down here on the bottom you have sheet one sheet two and sheet three and these automatically open with three default sheets unless you change it and then you can also go in and rearrange these sheets you can also copy um, or, or move them which is rearrange as well so let's go into my document Now I'm going to just zoom back in up to the top and show you that I've named my sheet Quilt Top Statuses and it's 2015. About every two or three years something may happen to my file from being overused or I may put it on a flash and forget that I put it on a flash and started updating it somewhere else and so whenever I come back to my main computer then I might rename my file just so that I know this is the most current one because I might have two or three versions on my computer and then I also on my row one I also put a label up in the top and working in Excel is a whole lot of learning and training I'm just going to give you some basic information here now I'm going to scroll up to the top and show you what's going on here okay even though I have numbers over on this column that are given to me by the grid I wanted a visual count for how many projects I had so I also added another column in here and just to show you something really cool about Excel I'm just going to delete some of these numbers so I've just deleted those numbers they're no longer there 
What's really cool about Excel is if you start to do a sequence, it will complete that sequence for you. So if I have a sequence of one, two, three, it's assuming that I'm counting by one. If this same sequence had been two, four, six, it would assume that I'm counting by two. So I can highlight my sequence and then down here you have what a little box and when you put your mouse on it, it turns into a plus. If I click and drag, it will fill in all of those numbers for me. So they come right back without me having to type that. So that's pretty cool. Now some of the things that I did is I add the date that I always open my document. Each project has a date of when I started it but I just want to make sure that whenever I'm updating my paper copy that I'm updating the most recently printed copy and so that's my date here and how I do that is this is a, a command that's called equal now open and close parentheses and that is sitting right up here on the top so that you can see that that's a very basic Microsoft Excel formula okay so then what I did so my column a has my numbers in it my column B has quilt name column C has my quilt start date column D has block sewn E sashing cut F sashing is sewn borders are sewn back is made top is quilted binding made Binding is quilted, a label has been made, quilt end date, and size. Now, this is real lenient because even though this says quilt top statuses, I also add in tote bags, pillowcases, uh, reefs, any craft projects that I'm working on, I just go ahead and put it into this quilt. But 97% of these things are actually quilts, so I'm okay with mixing the two. I just did not want to deal with two different documents so then from there anytime I start a project I try to put the actual start date on here as soon as I start the project and sometimes you'll see a question mark in my quilt start date and that's because I have absolutely no idea when I started that project or maybe I inherited a project from somebody or something was given to me or I could have won it in a drawing so I have no idea when those projects were started and if it's something that's been donated to me and I haven't done anything with yet I'll put the question mark in there just to hold the spot and then I'll actually put the date that I start working on it then whenever I get a certain part sewn I'll put an X into the box under the columns and you can have any columns that you like up here that will suit how you do things this is how I like to keep track of my projects and know exactly where they are because I kind of store my projects based on the status so for um, whenever I get something sewn let's just say that I had this top quilted right here my first one I would just click in that box and just type an X and then it will let me know that this top has been quilted. Now I'm going to go back and take that out because it has not been quilted. I just wanted to show you that I'm actually typing these things in. So I type the name of the project, the start of it, and then I, as I'm working on it and progressing through the quilt, then I'll go through and mark these various things. Sometimes you'll see in my borders sewn, I have a question mark. The question mark is not because I don't know whether or not a border has been sewn. The question mark is because I don't know if I want to put a border on that quilt yet. I haven't decided. Sometimes I'll piece my internal quilt tops and then I may or may not want to put borders on them. Some quilts are fine without borders and others need borders. And so I'll just go ahead and put a question mark in it for me to determine that later. So those are my fields. Now I'm going to scroll. And as I scroll, notice right under quilt name, the screen is going to be locked right here. And then as I'm scrolling, my number one will start to disappear. Number two as I scroll. So you see where 
it disappeared the first three so now I'm looking at four five six and what I like about that is as I scroll through my list my title lines will always stay the same they'll stay up at the top showing so I'm not confused if I was scrolling down and it wasn't locked on what column is what when I'm trying to mark my X's and that's done by using freeze panes which is under the view tab and you click that and it will freeze or unfreeze the panes based on your preference so you'll have to do some work with the help to understand a lot of these things if you're not familiar with Excel and just for clarification if you go over to your far right there's a little help question mark over here that you can click on and you can type in help for any subject area. I'm going to just take you over here so you can be shocked at how many works in progress I have. So I'm just going to scroll down. Yes, we're at 120. Okay. So we're at 183 works in progress. If you look down here at my zigzag nine mini, that's my last work in progress. And as I add things, I always just throw in a few extra rows at the bottom. And as I'm working on projects, I can add those in. And if I need to add more lines in, I can just highlight on the line, say right click and it'll insert a line for me. And let's say that I did insert that line. You can see over here on my left now where I have a blank line with no numbers. And I don't have to retype and say 185 here, 186 here, and 187 there. I don't have to do that. All I have to do is highlight my sequence again. So I've highlighted two or three of those. And then I just pull the mouse down and it will renumber everything for me. So I'm not constantly having to renumber this list. It will fill in as well. And I don't know how much further you want me to go with this. If you really want me to do a whole video on setting up a sheet from scratch, just let me know in the comments and I will do that. But I don't want to bore anybody or have this video way longer than it needs to be because it's already going to be a long video okay so the whole purpose of these columns was so that I could count what was going on on how many works in progress I have how many things I completed in a year and so forth so what I do is right here in this column it has the number 183 and I did not type that number in although I know over here on the left that I have 183 projects this number just verifies to me that I have something in every start date column when I first started this I was missing the start dates I had to go through my um, storage and pull out quilts or work works in progress to actually get these dates installed into this program and so that let me know how many I was missing. But right currently I've got question marks in them or, you know, question marks in them so there isn't anything blank right now. Then the next thing lets me know the next column is my block zone. And I can see that I have 134 projects where all of the blocks are sewn. Next to that is my sashing 104. And that lets me know that I've got the block sewn and the sashings have been cut. They have been cut. The next column lets me know how many I have the sashings cut and the blocks are sewn and they're actually on the quilt. So I have one difference from I have some sashing that's cut for a block but it's not on the quilt. The next column is my border sewn. These are the ones that I know need borders and they have not been done yet. 51 of them I have my backs already made. So actually when my borders are sewn, these are actually my completed quilt tops. 
So of my completed quilt tops, which are 71, 51 of them already have their backs made. Thirty of them have been quilted. Another thirty of them have the binding made. Twenty-eight of them have the binding on the quilt. Twenty-eight of them have the labels that are made. And twenty-six is saying of all of these thirty that I've quilted, two of them still needs the binding sewed and then I have 26 of them that needs my quilt end date entered. So ideally these numbers should all be the same once I get the quilt top completed. So that tells me that I've got something missing. And then over here the size column, it just tells me how many that I have the size of. And that's not important as well, it's just that I like to document my size. Sometimes you'll see here where I have my size put in after I completely, I have my size put in after I complete the quilt top. I know what size it is and I put it in and other times I get lazy and forget that I got to document this and it may not get in here until I actually get to quilting and most of the time that happens when I'm dealing with older projects like over here this stuff from 2009, 2004, 2006, 2010 I may not have any dates for that stuff over here because I wasn't worrying about it until I finished the project at that time but I'm currently trying to change that and anything that I have in my hand any quilt top that's in a lecture or anything like that I try to go ahead and get it and get the size put into the document so I was scrolling up to see where have I missed putting in some information Okay, so what's happening here is I have a, a, it's called the grunge sweatshirt jacket. And if I highlight, I can highlight the line by clicking on the number and an arrow pops up. So you can see this double line now around it. So if I do the grunge sweatshirt jacket, I see that I don't have a completion date although I have the label on the um, a label made and then I also have a Christmas wreath up here that I have a label marked but I don't have an end date that's because on a wreath I won't be putting a label on a wreath and so therefore I just mark that off so it's not anything that I think I have to do okay now let's go back and you want to know why are my lines highlighted with different colors. <clears throat> so we'll go down to the bottom and I'll explain why that is like that. And I have a color code bar. And in my color code bar, it tells me that my yellow highlights are completed projects. My light pink projects are working on some aspect of it off, on and off. My reds are my completed quilt tops and my blue are being quilted. Okay. But what I really want to talk about is once I get this part done, I have my total number of works in progress up here at 183. And then over here, in the quilt end date column, if I have anything in that column, that lets me know that those projects are 100% completed. So I have 26 projects that I have completed already this year. What I do is I like to have a percentage of completed items and then a new number for my total works in progress because it's no longer 183 anymore. It is now 157 because it will take the 183, subtract the 26 from it, and come up with my new works in progress number. That also lets me know how many projects I've actually completed for the year, which I think is very good motivation, or oh, it is for me anyway. 
So then I like to keep track of how many projects have I started in a current year. So every year I change this number. <clears throat> Let me go back. So in order to get this percent completed, I have a formula up at the top. So I click on it here and then I'm going to scroll up to show you the formula. And this formula equals column M row number 192 divided by column B row 192. And column M is my quilt end date divided by my column B which is the total number of works in progress. So that's where that number comes from and the B is just sitting over here in my B column because remember I said at first I did not have all the dates filled in over in my C column so I couldn't use the C column I had to use this count number that I had over here but ideally you should be able to use your C if you have all of your columns filled in. And then the second number is my total works in progress that's where I take the B192 which is my 183 number and subtract it from my M192 which is my total works in progress over here. And, the, and what really happens is as I add in rows over here these numbers will automatically change when I insert rows so I don't have to do these calculations over and over again. They'll stay consistent. Then my next thing I wanted to keep track of was how many works in progress I start in a year. And for here, I have a formula, so I'm going to click on my number that I got. And I go back up to the top to show you my formula. And it equals count if, open parentheses, C5 plus C through 119, comma, quote, asterisk 2016 quotes parent close parentheses so over in 2009 this 55 is how many completed items I completed in 2009 and then when I scroll back to look at percent completed that was 31.43 percent of my works in progress and I actually ended the year with 120 works in progress when I started with 175. So I have sheets down here at the bottom and so every year I would recopy my sheet so I'd make a new sheet and I'm just going to quickly show you how I do that. So I'm going to go to 2016. I'm going to say copy, move or copy. And then I want to just click this box and say create copy. And so I say OK. So then I've got a sheet down here called 2016 number 2. And you click it, you right click on it again, and then you can click rename. And I'm just going to name it test. And then you hit enter. So now that sheet is called test. After I get the new sheet, then I go up and I highlight rows. You, if you put the arrow on the numbers, the blue numbers, it will give you an arrow. You can click it and then it will give you a little marquee around the row letting you know it's highlight. I just, you can either right click and hit delete or you can just hit the delete button. So we'll just delete that and then the entire row disappears. So again, you just get the arrow button. I've got two rows here. I can click and drag, right click, and say delete. And then those rows disappear. So I do that to everything that's been completed for this year. And then at the bottom, you can see where my numbers have changed because now I have a lower percent than I did in the actual document. I come over here, I had 26 completed projects. Now I only have 23 projects. So that's how I get a new year and my numbers start over. And then down here, when I have this formula here for 2016, if it was 2017, I'd go back up to the top and change this 
2016 to 2017. And that's how I do it. If you have any questions or want me to do more in depth, like actually sitting down and typing this out for you, I'd be more than happy to do that. Um, I really like my sheet. One other thing that I do, I'm, I'm such a numbers person, is that I have compiled a yearly sheet as well. So down here you can see a sheet that's called yearly completion percent and those come off of my main sheets. So I'll click on that. Okay, so my camera battery died, so I had to replace my battery. So let's start back over here where I have a yearly project completion report. And you can see my yearly completion report from 2009 all the way through to date of 2016. And these numbers are automatically generated from the report. I just tell it to go back to those sheets and pull those numbers. So if I click on the first one, 279, it's actually in the sheet that's titled 2009 and it's row B182. And the same thing if I was clicking on 2016 that number is coming from 2016 row B192 and then my completed projects are coming from that M column and then it just divides the two numbers divide C by B and I get my percent so I hope you enjoyed this video. I know it was a little something different other than quilting at our sewing machines, but I find organization to be real important aspect of quilt making. And that's how I can get so many things done. So if you have any suggestions or want me to go more in depth into how I make these sheets, just let me know in the comments. I'd be more than willing to help. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.